Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Rugby Wrap-Up. We have our global rugby wrap-up where we do the news that caught our eyes, and those eyes belong to none other than Stephen Lewis, Brian Ray, and Dan Power. Guys, some interesting stuff going on globally. And Stephen, why don't you start with the LA Sevens? Yes, LA Sevens, top-level international Sevens coming back to this country and this hemisphere. So LA, I believe the weekend, June 25th, 26th. It is not a leg in the reconstituted World Series. The exact field has not been determined yet, but it is an absolutely wonderful opportunity for both the American and Canadian men's and women's teams to get serious competition just one month out from the Olympics in Tokyo. So from that perspective, from the preparation perspective for our friends in Chula Vista and our friends up north, it's fantastic. Put on by AEG, Dan Lyle, Donald Walsh, the old crew. Uh, It was a great tournament there just before COVID hits, so it's good to see it going again. And they're going to be the big dogs there, as far as I know, in terms of USA Rugby, right, Steve? Yeah, it's, it's the men's and women's sevens teams. So it will be their last chance. So I would imagine they'll have everyone, they'll have the top dogs out, as you would say. All right. And Dan, skipping across the ocean, uh, you're not only wearing your red Major League Rugby shirt for Major League Rugby, you're also wearing it for your adopted Welsh brothers. Grand I've Slam the, possibilities? Uh... Got the daffodil underpants on as well. Going full Welsh here today. I'm loving it. Alan Wynne Jones posted just behind me. Uh, how good? How good? I, I I would say that Wales would probably be most people's second team after their home country. It's just uh, they just love all people. I've never I've never met a bad Welshman. Steve, come on, Scotland third. Okay, I've just I've never been to Scotland. So maybe one day you and I can do the tour. But uh, but you didn't Scott, pick Scotland Scott, second, is what I think Steve's beef is. I know well, Canada, I know. so you're insulting Brian. No, I'm just and uh, and you're in my country, America. What what? The, well, I, I'm trying to American. insult all of us I at the same here. time. All right, sorry. I'll, I'll go on to another show. <laughs> all Bye. right, let's go to Brian. Brian, Dan failed miserably with his Wales headline, Superliga Americana de Rugby. Very nice. Nicely pronounced. Uh, Yeah, kicking off tomorrow, the South American version of MLR, maybe a little bit watered down version. Uh, It's going to start tomorrow, 10 rounds. Uh, First half of the season is played in Chile. Second half is played in uh, Montevideo, both kind of bubble situations. Now, we've already had some COVID problems. Uh, The Cobras versus Aguarius game has been postponed. So kind of keeping our eyes on that one. And uh, yeah, it's going to be exciting. The lost talent. All right. And you know what? We're just, you know, year, a couple of years away from the first ever rugby wrap up Champions Cup, where the best teams of the Major League Rugby North America play against the Superliga Americana de Rugby squads. Stephen, last but not least, speaking of Major League Rugby, we have some tweaks to some of the laws. Indeed. Most of these are designed to speed up the game and increase ball in play. So they are well intentioned. Um, I think. There, there are, you know, two sides to the coin. So some of the key ones are reduction in the uh, time allowed for a kick from 90 to 60 seconds. I think everyone can get behind that one. Uh, there's a more controversial one about red cards where the uh, recipient of the red card stays off the field, but you can replace him after 20 minutes. So instead of being off for the remainder of the game, depending on when the incident occurred, you're now only shorthanded for 20 minutes. And of course, there are, there are two sides to that and, and different opinions. And probably the other key one, there's two other key ones really, uh, scrum reset. They're not looking for, they're trying to avoid the curse of the modern game, which of course is the, is the scrum reset. Um, so that they're, they're expecting referees to make a quicker decision after, after one or two resets. And then the final one, which is also sort of interesting is the uh, any score under the posts is an automatic seven points, like a penalty try, so no conversion. Uh, in the belief that professional kickers make 99% of these kicks, but there's always some drama there. Gavin Hastings, Scotland versus England World Cup semi final. Oh. Don't I remember? Johnny Sexton versus the All Blacks in Dublin before they beat them for the first time. Brian, Canadian indignation is written all over your face. Do you want to comment? Uh, you know, I can live with the 60-second kicking rule, but everything else just sounds awful to me. Uh, I don't know why they try and make these weird changes, especially you know on the eve of the season. It seems like, uh, yeah, big thumbs down for all the rest of those. I, I don't want to. I don't want to tick any of you guys off by saying I was calling for the 20-minute red card. 
as they have in hockey with a basically making it a 20 a 20 minute game misconduct but it's happened like i renamed the ontario arrows the toronto arrows and i gave the rattlers the their name in atlanta i have influenced this league dan I know that you can't talk about any of this because you're on the payroll, but if you could talk about something, what would you say to these law yeah, changes? Well, well done, Matthew. Um, change is always difficult, right? Um, just give it some time, see how it goes. And I, I, I get the feeling the league is flexible enough that if something in here is not working or they feel it's not working, they, they, there's a possibility they could change it or, you know, it, it's tough, right? We're, we're growing an established sport in a new market. So they've got a kind of, try different things to, to become relevant. So we'll see, we'll see, we'll give it time. And I, I'm very sympathetic to Brian. And I think a lot of people feel the same way as Brian's opinion in terms of, hey, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, but uh, give, it a, give it a chance, see how it is. The, the red card one's probably the only one that jumped out to me that it's like, if, if, imagine first five minutes, something happens, there's a red card. The mentality of the teams is now totally changed. It's like survive for 20 minutes and we're good, as opposed to like, we got 75 minutes. We're not good. Um, so the complexity of the game around that red card one, that'll be interesting to see. And I think the other thing that I will say is how late this has come. Um, I think a lot of teams recruited, especially at the set piece. And so the scrum reset one will, will be a challenge for some teams who have really stocked up, you know, with the, with the big front row under the anticipation of turning the screws at the scrum. So how that works will be interesting, but we've got great coaches in the league. We've got great players. And they're going to adapt and overcome, and we're going to get going this weekend. Stephen, yeah, just to the red card one. I mean, I I see both sides of, of why they're doing it. I get, um, but it's the law of unintended consequences, and the red card one in particular, to, to me, is potentially concerning because what it does is it, as Dan says, it changes the mindset, uh, the way you play, but it rewards bad technique or malfeasance, and I don't think we should be doing that. Okay. All right. We, we've had conversations about this um, on and off the air, and, and I'm still saying that you can enforce this and you can keep teams from using it as a weapon if you penalize the teams financially and in terms of hours off the pitch or away from games. So two, two, two games were red cards in the Six Nations. What was the point differentials and the results? You could argue make the argument that they, they were only that close because the other team played shorthanded. Dan's Welsh team would not be in the Grand Slam seat that they're in right now if they didn't have red cards in the first two games. That's why there's an asterisk next to them at the top of that table. All right. Well, <laughs> you know what? We can agree to disagree. Well, I actually think perhaps steal an idea from hockey with the power play may have been an option. So instead of having a 10-minute yellow card for something silly, like we saw players get yellow carded, just come off the bench for an infraction that their teammates had committed 15 minutes earlier, have a power play in hockey, have two minutes down with they play with 14 when you're inside them 22, if there's an infraction, player stands behind the dead ball line, waits. I mean, as a non-hockey guy growing up, that's my favorite part of hockey is when there's power play, boom, it gets exciting. The puck starts moving quickly and there should be like a no risk. Hey, you've got 10 phases here. Uh, with player down, get after it, and then bang. And it's not perfect. Believe me, I'm not saying that should be done. But there's definitely some tweaks that can happen. And I think looking at other sports is not a bad option there, Matthew. Good idea, Matt. Well, well like, we can't talk about hockey and not go to Brian. Personally, I'd like to see hockey go the, uh, the way of rugby. And if a player gets a big penalty, then they have to play four players for the rest of the game. That oh. would be more interesting. Come on. <laughs> oh, that is so lame. How about this? How about instead, Steve, maybe? Hold on. What if if a team gets a red card, the other team gets 16 players? So it's 16 yeah. on 14. Yeah, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no? All right. All right. Uh, final, final quick thoughts. 30 seconds each. Steven. Dan Power for commissioner. Oh, George, choice. don't listen to him. I'm not coming for you. Not a bad no, choice. No, Brian. I'm no Brutus. Arrows 2021 MLR Shield winners. Wow, that's a prediction on the season. <laughs> Rugby United New York is going to stun everybody and win the win the league this year. I mean, that's it. Dan, we are back. If you would have told me 12 months ago when uh, we were, were looking at uh, potentially the zombie apocalypse taking over the world, rugby was not even in anyone's thoughts. We're back this weekend. Get out and support your local team. Do it safe when they're allowed to go back to the stadiums. Otherwise, watch on TV, 
drag friends to you, uh, a safe place to watch on TV. Tell them to watch it. Support Major League Rugby. Support Matt McCarthy. Go Steve Lewis in New York. Go Toronto on Brian Ray. Can't wait. This weekend's going to be awesome. Dan Power for Commissioner. Dan Power for Commissioner. I'm in trouble here. And on that note, Matt McCarthy for Brian Ray, Stephen Lewis, and Commissioner Dan Power. I'm Matt McCarthy for Rugby wrap Please make sure you check out our other segments, including Martial Law, The Zack Attack, and our Major League Rugby show with Dylan Fawcett of Rugby United New York, J.P. Duplessis of the NOLA Gold, and WWE legend John Bradshaw Layfield. And please join our Rugby Wrap-Up American Red Cross blood donor team. Thank you, gentlemen. <laughs>